Uh, welcome to another Coffee with Sam So. Uh, here today we're at the Mill Point Cafe Bookshop uh, talking to Brad Underwood from Galileo um, Mining. Uh, we'll be talking about what's been happening uh, since our last chat, which is probably a quarter away. Um, Brad, um, give us a review of what's been happening, a very tumultuous, well, nine months. Certainly has been a busy time, Noel. I'm happy to give you uh, an update and a review of the year, as everyone will not obviously understand. It's been a huge impact with the coronavirus, which almost saw our industry shut down earlier in the year. Uh, luckily, the West Australian government uh, really came through for our industry and were able to keep operating through that period. And even more than that, we were able to raise $5 million during the coronavirus lockdown. So without even being able to meet people in person, the work we're doing in the field was enough to attract interest from investors that we got that $5 million raise away. And that was on the back of results from the Fraser Range. Uh, so a quick refresh on the Fraser Range, it's very prospective for nickel. There was a major discovery there in 2012, which is now the operating Nova Mine, owned by IGO. And since then, there have been a number of other discoveries uh, from the Creasy Group and more recently from Legend Mining. Uh, so when we went out there and did our first RC drilling program back in March, the results that we generated from that were good enough that it allowed us to do a $5 million raise, like I said, uh, during the coronavirus lockdown. So that was uh, some time ago. And since then, we've done more drilling. Uh, we've identified uh, more of the mineralized system that we first hit earlier in the year. And as well as that, we continue to do EM survey and building up the targets. Uh, so we can talk more about that um, as we go through it. But uh, yes, it has been a very tumultuous year. One of the, um, obviously when we spoke before, and I mentioned this before, is, is you know, nickel is obviously um, going to be playing a bigger role, I believe, um, uh, going forward in, in, in that sense. Um, and one of the things that uh, we spoke about that I felt unique was your geology and the fact that uh, you're not going to get, you're not having a lot of uh, noise in terms of your surrounding uh, country rocks. Can you just run by us again? You know, obviously nickel is slightly different to your goal exploration play and, and the way you, you, you go about your, your exploration. And one of the key things, obviously, is geophysics. And, and I think that's where even my, myself, we get lost in the t how you do it and the significance of your, your pretty pictures, you know. Can you just give us a good sort of run through on that sense? Absolutely, so exploration really needs to be tailored to both the commodity that you're looking for and the ground within which you are looking for that commodity. So uh, gold exploration strategies which would work in one area uh, might not work in another. And that's the same for nickel as well. Uh, so most of the nickel within Western Australia over the time has been produced from Cambauda style nickel mineralisation. Uh, so those were volcanic flows erupted onto the surface of the earth uh, a few billion years ago. Uh, but that's different to the Fraser Range. So what we're looking for in the Fraser Range are nickel deposits that have been uh, intruded, which means pushed into the earth from uh, the molten magma at depth, but they've never actually reached surface. So they have a different geometry, uh, mineralogy, chemistry, and configuration than those other types of deposits we have in Western Australia. So what that means is that we've got to use different techniques. As well as that, uh, also, sorry, a, a different version of the same techniques. So the underlying principles of exploration are the same. We are looking for anomalies, uh, things which stand out from the background and those anomalies are what generates the uh, pretty maps. I think you describe them as the, yeah. the red dots on the map that make up a lot of our targets. Uh, so in terms of um, your, your EM and your targets, um, I mean, there is, there is a difference between uh, flying and ground, obviously, and, and obviously the, that then fits back to the um, reliability of your targets. Um, you've obviously done some exploration, uh, the discovery wasn't made, but how have you turned that to next year in terms of, um, you know, it, it, neg negative drilling results is not always a bad thing. It's actually helping you to focus and vector yourself to, to, to your real target. So how has that sort of transgressed to your new program, obviously, next year? 
Yes, yeah, so you're right. Um, all drilling programs add value and it understands the, the rocks. Uh, sometimes it might uh, tell us where not to look, which is a good thing in, in the way that it actually saves us money. So one of the things that are, are false positives, where you might get a target uh, or a series of targets in a particular block of ground, which represent false positives and aren't associated with mineralization. So we're lucky we haven't had any of those as yet. Uh, with the drilling that we've done, uh, rather than call it negative, it's probably uh, non-positive. It's uh, another way of describing the same thing. So what we haven't done yet is finish drilling those targets. So we haven't, uh, we're in a, a holding pattern for one of our better targets at Lantern East. It hasn't been positive and it hasn't been negative. We just haven't been able to define the source of the conductor we have in that area. Uh, so we're talking about EM. Uh, we've done a number of EM surveys in that area before the drilling, but after when we completed the drilling and weren't able to find the source of the anomaly, we then went back and did a number of additional surveys to try and determine where that source is. And the reason why, why we put in so much effort is because it is such a prospective area. So there are a number of uh, uh, EM sources that can provide false positives. Uh, they might be uh, graphitic sediments, uh, sulfitic sediments, uh, uh, saline groundwater. We've discounted all of those so far and we still haven't been able to identify the source of the conductor even though it still exists in the area. So we now have remodeled that conductor and our next drilling program will focus on that area. So there's a good chance if we do uh, positively identify the source of that conductor that, that will be a significant uh, positive step for us. I think a lot of the viewers need to understand that uh, exploration is, is never an overnight success. Uh, nickel exploration, in my opinion, I've never sort of been in that industry, is another step of magnitude on that description. Um, you know, the, the, I think the word we used was, is, is false negative as opposed to false positive or negatively. But in terms of, um, you know, obviously, the Fraser Belt, it's a Fraser Range, is very, very prospective, but it's still new relatively to everywhere else, like the gold fields, and you know, where, where they have decades of research and, and understanding of, of how the fluids work and the structure works. I think Fraser Range is still new, young. It, 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 correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so, that journey of trying to find and, and define and vectorizing, it's um, not an easy process. Would that be a fair? comment to make? Yes, I think that's very fair. Exploration is, uh, is definitely a process, uh, so it takes time and what might be described as overnight success is really the case. There's always a, a lot of work that has been done beforehand, building up to a point where we're able to uh, put an X marks the spot for a uh, drill target, mm. test that target and then it comes back positive. Generally, that's a number of rounds of drilling into the development of a prospect, mm. and that's the situation we find ourselves in now. Yeah. In terms of um, your projects, I mean, we you, we really haven't touched on it. You know, where are you heading with the projects? What what have you done? Obviously, in review, um, where what has been done, what stage, and then what's next. Uh, so, uh, because we've been, uh, I've been personally exploring the Fraser Range for over 10 years, we've got quite a, a good methodology that we know uh, works where there is a discovery to be made. Uh, well, we can't guarantee that, that, that we, we won't miss anything, but for any large deposits, we're confident we'll be able to find those. And that's the value of ground-based EM surveying. Uh, so large deposits, because of the amount of uh, sulphide that they contain, will provide a conductive response. So we're doing a huge amount of EM surveying, building up additional targets for us to drill test later in the year. Uh, but our first program will be on the targets we already have. So there's a, a, a large number of targets that we anticipate that will be coming through over the next uh, three to six months, and then we'll be cycling them through and drilling them. So that's a pretty standard exploration methodology as well. We have a pipeline of targets from the more advanced to those at the beginning of that uh, process and then drill test them as they meet their various hurdles and uh, go out and see what's there. So is the focus still on the Albany Fraser uh, projects or are you going to be moving on to the other tax and like your Norseman and things like that? Well, you mentioned it earlier, it's the, really the focus is on nickel for us now. 
Uh, we started off as a cobalt company a few years ago when cobalt was very strong and we still have that cobalt resource. Uh, but the price of cobalt has dropped significantly over the last few years. Mm. We've really focused on nickel now. And at our Norseman project, there we have a cobalt nickel resource already, but we're looking for those nickel sulfides, which will help in the future development of battery technologies. And the long-term price of nickel is around 15,000 US a tonne. Uh, so it's been substantially below that over the previous few years. And now we've crept above the long-term average. There's a lot of people are getting quite excited about that, but it can go a lot higher. So being in the nickel sulfide exploration industry, I think is gonna be of uh, great benefit to us over the coming year. I'm a big believer in nickel and uh, particularly nickel sulfide. So at the Norseman project, it's the, the southern part of the Norseman Maluna uh, belt where there's been a huge amount of nickel come out of that area. So that's the Cambauda style nickel mineralization, which is associated with uh, ancient volcanic flows. And we're about 40 kilometers south of another uh, company that's had success in that type of mineralization, that's Mincor, with their Cassini deposit. So we're about 40, 50 kilometers south of there in the same type of uh, rocks. So we know its perspective. We've already got an existing nickel cobalt resource, although that's laterite, and we're looking for sulfide deposits in the area as well. I guess where there's smoke, there's potential fires, and that's sort of the theory. Absolutely, it's a particularly prospective part of the world, and that bout has generated most of West Australia's nickel over the past 50 years. And mm -hmm. I think there's a lot more to be discovered within that bout generally. When, when we look at um where nickel exploration is today, um, where it, it was. Can we uh, compare to where gold exploration was? Obviously, we've always said, you know, exploration has been sort of like a dying art for the last 20 years to the recent boom we've had, and all the influx of money has created new targets and, 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 and obviously opened a lot more eyes to potential, the, the future potential that we've been talking about, that, you know, the, the whole belt. From my um, understanding, the, the nickel expression's taken a real back seat because obviously over the last few years, the depressing well, pricing, now that it's slowly building up, like you said, 15,000, and, and, and we're talking more green nickel and things like that. Do you see that as the future for, for nickel sulfide exploration or nickel sulfide companies? I definitely think there's gonna be a resurgence in nickel exploration in Western Australia. Uh, so after the last boom, uh, which ended around 2007, 2008, uh, with the introduction of uh, pig iron, which really uh, put a, a dent in the price of nickel, we haven't seen as much nickel exploration since then. So that was 12 years ago. And that's quite a long time in the terms of the commodity cycle and the investment cycle as well. And I think it, over the next five years, we'll see a lot more nickel sulfide exploration. And I hope that will translate into a lot more discoveries. Yeah. We used to produce a lot of nickel in Western Australia and it's dropped uh, markedly over the past 10 years. And in, in nickel sulphide obviously is the price because everyone's sort of chasing that as opposed to nickel letter and we know the chemistry is you know, different and it's in, in, in plus and minuses of, of one of the, the two types. Uh, obviously nickel sulphide is, 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 is high grade richer and there is a, a bigger part they play in the, the green movement or the EV movement, I should say, going forward. Um, I, I like I like that whole area because obviously that's the nickel country, and and, yeah. and and you you you're sort of playing the right country. And so in, in going forward for Galileo, you know, next in 2021, I mean, who would have thought 2020 was the way it was, and who would have thought how it's panned out? So what's 2021 for you guys in terms of, you know, your 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 journey? It always involves drilling programs for us. Uh, so since we listed, we've completed 13 drilling programs in two and a half years. Uh, so I can guarantee you that there will be four to five drilling programs over the year. And if we make a discovery, then that changes the, the nature of what we are undertaking. So the drilling becomes continuous. At the moment we're doing four to five drilling campaign, uh, drilling programs per year. Uh, we've got the most advanced targets we've ever had in the Fraser Range. Uh, in some ways that Lantern East target, the next drilling program will be uh, do or die for that prospect. And then Lantern South will be building up the understanding of the mineralization we've already got, which is relatively 
uh, low grade and we're just looking to see if there are some pockets of high grade uh, around that area as well. Here we've got all of the e other EM surveys we're doing which are building up targets uh, and then we've got the soil sampling and earlier prospect development at Norseman. So four to five drilling programs and hopefully one of those will be uh, making a discovery. I guess you know it, um, viewers need to understand obviously this is a process and and I've, I've been sort of been singing the song of, of trying to find find yourself a, a, a company that has um, the right geology, right management, right strategy. Um, Gallo is one of those things that I think it, it's 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 in the right space. Um, in terms of um, you know your thoughts on the new price, obviously you you mentioned that you know it's looking to go north as as opposed to not, but. Um, if, if you had that, you know, um, five seconds to say to someone, a shareholder or potential stakeholder, you know, what, what would it be, you know, to, to take, buy the stock and reasons why? Nickel exploration is a great place to be and we are professional nickel explorers. We've got a better chance than most. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, I guess that's, that's the way it comes down to is it's, it's actually focusing on, on where, what the price is, I guess, in that yeah. sense. Um, look, you know, feel free to send us um, messages, or, or I know you guys have been doing that a lot. Um, I'm sure Brad will take some um, um, questions. Um, and look, you know, 2021 is going to be um, a new year, and who knows where it's going to be, but obviously there's a lot of funding into the industry, and, and, and the likes of uh, Galileo is well-funded, and. You know, one one just needs to wait and see how, how things pans out. And if nickel price, as I think it will do, continue to rise, I think it, it's going to be more than a flavour of the month. But um, Brad, thank you for your time. Um, look, it's always a great, I've followed you guys and I think you, you guys, um, it's going to take a while, I guess, but it's it's... It's a good story. I like. I like. I think nickel is going to be the space. Absolutely. I'm not sure how long it might take, but every time we do a drilling program, we've got a chance of success. There, and they're all designed that way as well. Yeah. Um, like you say, uh, might be overnight success, but we're doing a lot of drilling leading up to a point where we can make the discovery. So let's hope overnight success happens. Yeah. I mean, look, Frey, the Frey Range is, is due for a discovery, and, and I always believe that nothing a big deposit lenovo doesn't sit by itself um the system is big enough to, for for many novas um but anyway thank you brad and um looking forward to to next year and, and seeing where you guys head absolutely it will be a great year all right thanks thank you